Matrix Revolutions movie review. This picks up exactly where the second film left off. In fact, it really assumes that you've already seen the first two. There's absolutely nothing done to help introduce other people to it. But hey, that saves on exposition and that film definitely has enough of that going on. Neo appears as if he's jacked in. That sounds really nasty. Bane is still acting suspicious and because of that they decide to leave him alone with the medical person who doesn't appear to be proficient at defending herself. Neo decides he must walk his own path and Morpheus, Niobe and others have to make it back to Zion before it's too late. And at Zion, they are preparing to make a last stand against the Sentinels. The problems of the second movie continue and... Maybe I should start with, this is essentially a war flick and it crams every single one of the cliches of such in there. The effects are great, but again, they're sometimes used where it really doesn't feel like it's necessary. It's just because the brothers thought it would look cool, and sometimes their instincts about that are horribly, horribly wrong. The, pun intended, inevitable showdown between Smith and Neo is riddled with just effects, you know, it doesn't feel so much like a battle as just, you know, showing off what the computers can do now. It doesn't even feel organic to this franchise. Some people have, you know, pointed out that it looks more like something in Dragon Ball. I think I'm not that familiar with that anime. Or any other. The characters are still just not that engaging, you know, again, other than the couple of main characters, you know, still there from the first movie. And the acting is, again, just not that compelling, although some of it is somewhat interesting. Morpheus is in a bit of a different situation than he was in the first two movies, or for most of the second movie as well. and. He kind of, you know, Lawrence Fishburne, he pulls that off quite well. The dialogue is, again, just usually really bad. Most of the lines you just want to forget. If you do remember them, it's because of how bad they are. Weaving still has fantastic delivery. And another actor has to impersonate Weaving a bit and he does a fantastic job. He really must have studied Weaving's facial expressions and his tone of voice, the way he speaks. He, he really nails that. But other than that, there's really not much that this has going for it. The plot is not that compelling and there really isn't that much of it. It really is just, you know, closing off what, you know, the second film really started. The conclusion is somewhat surprising, some would say, but it's also just strange. I don't have some anything against thought-provoking you know, films and shows, but it also isn't that... It doesn't particularly work if taken literally, I think someone pointed out. You know, if you read it as symbolic, if you just go by the the interpretations, the possible interpretations, if you compare, you know, many things are named after, you know, mytholo mythological, you know, 
creatures and events and characters and if you go by that it has some value but if if you go into this movie not knowing that you're not really going to be able to follow it it's not going to make that much sense and the first film did the first film did also have some allegorical you know nice little details to it but they were well integrated and here they've kind of taken over the pacing is not all that good and the film especially isn't that compelling to rewatch you know the first time you might be somewhat interested although i would imagine many will end up feeling kind of cheated the there is a reasonable amount of action as well as tension in this but most of the action does take place in the real world not in the matrix and when it is in the matrix it's either too you know, it grows stale because it goes on for too long, as with the second movie, or at least some parts of the second movie, or it's just a cheap copy of something they already did better. Pretty early on, there's something that looks an awful lot like the lobby shootout from the first movie, and it's considerably less interesting. The one thing it has to it at all is that the enemies are walking on the ceiling and maybe this has some sort of meaning to it something but other than that I mean it doesn't appear to give them any kind of advantage in the fight and it's just not that compelling of a shootout the action is again shooting and martial arts and the film is still shot quite nicely and there are moments of stylization although since most of those tend to take place in the matrix there aren't that many of them the acting to return to that Keanu Reeves is asked for more range and he's just not that good at it, although he does do... You know, he, he tries, at least, you can tell. This one also introduces some ideas that in and of themselves are nice enough, but they're maybe a bit late in introducing them. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.